Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, hit the red subscribe button down below and that'll keep you up to date with all my new content coming soon. So today I put a post out on my Facebook page, Instagram and Twitter and I've had a few replies um, for questions about childminding. This can be, um, well it's basically everything. If you Before you were childminding, if you've been childminding for years or if you're not even interested in childminding but want to know a bit how it works out for my family, sort of that type of thing. So I got a few replies, which is fantastic. And um, the first one is how to make paperwork a less daunting task. Now, honestly, you look at what you need to be doing for the week and it's just like, oh, do I have to do it? I just want to go and play with the kids because that's what you're in the job for because you just love playing with the kids. But I think if you cut it down, I mean, it's easier for us to do it because there's three adults working and it doesn't seem as much when you're doing it that way but if you are on your own then I can see why it would be awful to do so first of all I would make a list we have endless lists in our house of what we need to do and when we need to do it by and what needs doing and what Ugh, it's just clipboards everywhere so I would do a list of the not very important stuff but still needs to be done a list of the needs doing in the next month and I would do the list that needs doing today. And honestly, it doesn't even have to be a fancy list. We use scrap pieces of paper that have been leftovers from um, photos that we've been printing out. It's the back of all of that stuff. It's not a fancy list. But um, if you know what you have to do for that day, it doesn't seem as bad as what you have to do for the whole month. So I would do it that way sort of thing tips for the Ofsted registration visit. Now my Ofsted registration visit was seven years ago so it's so hard. I have so many questions about what you need to be doing for it and to be honest it feels like it was such a long time ago. So many different things have changed that I wouldn't be giving the correct information out. So I would go and speak to your local authority and get some information on what they feel needs to be done, set in place, ready for Ofsted. I 100% know that you need your policies and procedures. If you do have um, your contracts, I would show them what you intend to do with them. I would also um, maybe start making a learning diary so you can show them how you feel a learning diary will be set out in your setting and what you can include in it. So um, insert your trackers, insert... Um, your observation papers ready um all about me forms are a great way to show Ofsted that you're um what's the word i can't think what the word is but showing Ofsted that you are getting to know the child before they've even arrived and um, which helps him with the settling in period um i would also have your setting almost ready if you are really at the beginning and Ofsted have put their name down to come like the next day then obviously it's a bit of a daunting task but have the setting ready as if the child was going to arrive the next morning sort of thing. But definitely contact the local authority because they have the list of everything that you really, really need. <laughs> do we need to do the food hygiene course? Now, as far as I'm aware, the answer is yes, because you are dealing with food. You are dealing with the child's lunch. You might not be cooking it, but you are um, having it stored in your house until lunchtime and then you're serving it to the child as well. So I would say yes, you need the food hygiene. And at the end of the day, it's such a quick course. It just is an internet based one. Um, they send, well, they sent all the stuff to us through email. So I'm not sure if they do that anymore, if it might be in the post for the certificate. But anyway, um, I would sign up to that and just have your back covered. There's just no, no other way of saying it really. Is it difficult to do my own accounts? Should I hire an accountant? No. Honestly, it is so simple. When I'm gonna be doing a tax review, a tax review video? I'm gonna be doing a tax video soon of how we set it up and what we do throughout the year for our taxes. So it's gonna be super simple, super easy, and you're gonna be able to follow that. Um, but I would say when you get your head around it, we have never had an accountant. As long as you are keeping receipts, as long as you are keeping up to date and as long as you are keeping the bills from the parents then there is nothing that you should be worried about because you have all the information there it's just about setting it out the right way and making it easy for you 
should I charge when we go on holiday, when the family goes on holiday? So ours are in the middle of changing at the moment. We used to do, if the parent was going on holiday, it would be half price um, for however long they wanted, but it was a maximum of four weeks. So if the child was here two days a week, they could have the two days four times at half price, which we seemed fair and it was fantastic. But now that the 30 hours are coming in, we are dropping our... Um, we're dropping the rate that we're gaining from the funding. We are at the point where we need to be thinking what is right for us? How are we going to be, you know, keeping on top of all of our mortgages and things like that? So we are changing ours to the parents are still going to have to pay throughout the holiday. We are open all year round and if they want um, holiday or sickness, then they're still going to have to pay because it's the only way that we are going to be able to stay open. Also, I would say when you go on holiday, I would give them it for free because it's, well, you're giving them a service and you're not there for the service sort of thing. But again, it's totally up to you if you want to charge them half price for your holidays. But then again, I would say how many times a year are you allowed to do the holiday? Because if then all of a sudden you're going half price for, for months and months and months, I don't think that would be fair for the parents. But talk it through with them, talk it through with family, get some advice from them maybe, but yeah, ours are free if we go on holiday. What does your daily routine look like? So at the minute we are a bit different because we're spending pretty much all the time in the garden which is fantastic because the kids are loving it. So the children will arrive and we will do breakfast for the couple that are starting really, really early. The ones that have had breakfast at home are able to do free play with all the toys behind us. When everybody's in, we will go and lock the back gate and then we can go on the deck in or in the playroom. They will have free play again until we, probably about half 10 when we then go and have our morning snack, which is um, fruit, crisps or crackers or anything like that. Rice cake, rice cakes, rice crackers, rice cakes. I don't know what they are now. My mind's gone blank. What are they? Are they rice crackers? Rice crackers just doesn't sound right. Um, after that, it will be nappies and bums. But obviously, if they poo throughout the day, then it gets done straight away. <coughs> then it will be um, starting to do our sitting down activities. The ones that are to do with our monthly planning will be getting done after snack time. Um... Then it will be sort of the observation side of things. So if a child is needing an observation in their learning diaries, we will obviously have a bit more attention on that child. But obviously there's three of us working in a certain, so all the other children are still involved and getting activities and whatever they want to play with. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, so that will be up until about half 11, 12-ish. Then it will be lunchtime. Then it'll be sleeping time for the little ones. It would be either in the pram on the way back from um, a play group if we're going out anywhere, in the car if we're going out anywhere because they've been knackered, um, or we just put them in a pram and they get wheeled into our kitchen, which is an open hatch, which we can see them completely the whole time that they are asleep. So that is brilliant. Then it will be coming up to about one o'clock, two-ish. It'll be snack time again. Then it'll be free play until the afternoon when all the children start to go home. So honestly, they get free reign of the place. It's garden, decking, or playroom, and they just go anywhere and crazy. Obviously the toys that are on the top shelf, we have to do sitting down with them because they are a bit messy, like the painting and things like that. We don't have that as a free play area, but we do have the drawing and um, the crayons, the stories. Um, what else do we have that's a bit messy that's free play? The music, loads of things that are free play, but the ones that are like Play-Doh and the ones that are painting and anything like that is a sit down activity that we like to do. Then at around three o'clock we have quite a few that leave and then it's free play until the four o'clock is leave as well. I've been childminding for five years, but the last year I have only done wraparound care for over fives. I've lost my confidence with under fives. What would you recommend I do to start planning? Um, well, I wouldn't say completely write it off because under fives are super fun to play with. There's a lot of paperwork by the side of them, but I would say 
how to get your confidence back. Take it step by step. It doesn't have to be you're diving in and having like three under five straight away. Just do it one at a time. Get the plan inside a thing. I would say, I would say get to know the child that you're with. As long as you know them and it's more of a family setting, then the planning will flow easier because you'll know what they like, what they don't like, what they need to improve on, what they need to develop um, and things like that. And just sticky note it. You don't have to do a full blown planning sheet straight away. If you're getting to know and feeling less confident about something, just do it however you want to do it. And yeah, that's what my advice would be. So that's it, that's all of our questions. So I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up, and if there's anything else you'd like to know, I can do another Q&A soon, and I'll see you again. Bye!